with the Oracle tag. Um, it was started by, um, oh, I'm trying to think what her name is. But anyway, I saw it on Ethany's channel and uh, she had posted a link to the original person. So I will, if I can find the link, I will post it down below for everybody. I just, yeah, I just dropped something. Anyway, um, I'll post it down below for everyone so you can go and look and maybe participate too. And let me know if you participated because I love watching people's tag videos. So the first question was, what was your first Oracle deck? My first Oracle deck is this one, which is the Goddess Oracle. I got this back uh, when I was in university. So back in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, I got this deck. It was my first Oracle deck. I'd been reading tarot cards and collecting tarot cards for a while, but this was my first like Oracle deck. I still have it. It's still one of my favorites. I love this deck. It's got like just such a nurturing vibe to it. It's very female empowering kind of deck. It has goddesses from all different cultures which is wonderful and I think that the artwork uh, they've really tried to honor each of those kind of traditions with the artwork it comes with a great little guidebook um, this is like the first edition there's like you know later editions of this but it is still it is still being published it's still out there you can still get it um, it's a really great deck the second is what is your current favorite deck that's really hard for me because there's lots of decks I really love and I don't know how I can pick a favorite. Uh, currently on my altar, I guess maybe that's one way to judge favorites, is I have um, two cards from the, one from the Gods and Titans and one's from the Goddesses and Sirens Oracle. These are both by um, Stacey DeMarco with artwork by Jimmy Manton. Um, and these are really great god and goddess decks. I really like that he did a god deck. There's so few god decks out there. So it's really nice to have like a masculine and a feminine deck. And if you want, you can put those two decks together and you can have a big giant deck. So the artwork is not totally my favorite because it is kind of superhero-y, but I still really like it. Like, and I like working with it. I think it's, it's a really great deck to work with as far as god and goddess decks both of these are really nice decks and then i also have the um fairy oracle by brian froud this is a deck too that i've had for ages since university and um it's a, a, again a deck still in print you can still get it. it is a wonderful deck it's probably the closest thing to what i think fairies look like um it has like the best fey kind of energy so that's a deck I'm always going to have and I'm always going to work with. So that's it there. And then on um, for my daily draws, lately I've been working with the Good Tarot. Um, yes, this is tarot, but it is kind of more like an oracle deck because it has like affirmations. Um, so which is why I've been using it as a daily draw deck. And it is really beautiful it is, uh, as you know, all her decks are um, with the exception of the E-squared deck. Don't get that one. Don't waste your money. But the Good Tarot, um, it's just, it's beautiful. And it is, I would say it's more of an Oracle deck than a Tarot deck for sure. Just gorgeous, gorgeous artwork and just love it. So yeah, so that's, that's lately what I've been working with. So it's hard for me to pick a favorite, but these are my favorites at the moment, maybe. I don't know. It's like picking between your children. It's like, I can't. I just, I just can't. Right. Putting these guys away. Um, what is your um, most used deck? Ooh, that is a tough one again. Like I said, right now I'm using the Good Tarot mostly because it's my daily draw of the deck. But last year it would have been all year long I was using the Wisdom of the Oracle, also by Colette Baron reed So this is a pretty heavily used uh, Oracle deck as well for daily draws, and I also really love this deck too. Look at that gold, woo, gold Jenny, I love it. Um, great artwork. She always has the same artist um, that we're, that she works with, so I really enjoy her art as well. And I like this deck because um, it just has a variety of messages, and it's just really nice nurturing loving deck so love it what is your least used deck again I don't know um, 
Hmm. Just looking over here. There's some decks I haven't used in a really long time. For example, the Wisdom of Avalon. I feel like this is like a Colette Baron Reed uh, video, but I used this for years as my daily draw deck. And um, then I got the Enchanted Map, and that became my daily draw. And then the Wisdom of the Oracle, now the Good Tarot. So it's kind of like it's kind of in retirement in some ways, which means like I don't want to throw it away. I've used it a lot, but I don't know when I'm going to pick it up and use it again. So that's kind of where I'm at with that deck. Um, how did you learn to read Oracle cards? <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I've been reading tarot for several years before I picked up an Oracle deck. So when I picked up an Oracle deck, it was not a difficult transition. Um, I just, you know, looked up the meanings, but also got to know the meanings and use my intuition. So I think because I already read tarot, I didn't, I don't feel like I really learned it, how to read it. I just did it. Um, what do you use Oracle cards for? Well, a variety of things. I do use them as, um, like I said, I have a daily draw one and a weekly draw and my lunar card and my card for the year. I also have a chakra deck that I use once a month to kind of do a chakra reading on myself. Um, I use them a lot in conjunction with tarot, especially when I'm reading for others because I find it's a really good way to wrap up the whole reading. It often confirms things that have already been said in the tarot cards and gives like a nice wrap up and overall sort of um, theme for what's going on. Um, How do you read the cards? Guidebook, intuitive or both? I would say both. Um, certainly when I get a deck and I'm reading for myself, I'll look in the guidebook. But when I'm reading for others, I do go purely intuitively. And I think you can really do that with the Oracle cards because they're so open-ended. Um, they're a really great tool for developing your intuition. Do you use spreads? Well, it depends, yes. Because like I said, often I'll use them in conjunction with a tarot card. I might pull one or two just to wrap things up. Um, but I will use them in spreads, like the chakra spread is a very specific one if I'm doing a year spread. So I do use them in spreads, yes. Um, do you mix Oracle with other divination? As I said, yes, I do. Um, what makes a great deck? A great deck, I find, is one that has lots of variety in it. That's not just all sunny sunshine, as much as we love that. That has like sort of dark and light in it, I find really good. I like a deck that um, is has an artist consistently for the images. Uh, there are exceptions, but for the most part, yes. I like a deck that has like is meaty, has a good nice chunk of cards. Like I think that 44 is kind of a minimum. I do have car uh, decks with less. But I do like um, I do like ones that are meaty and have lots of images in them. I have a variety of meanings and gives you a lot to think about. What's the difference between tarot and oracle? Tarot is a very specific system. It is 78 cards uh, with the four suits plus the major arcana. So it's very specific. And no matter what kind of tarot deck you have, uh, you can transfer some of those meanings over. Whereas oracle is free flowing. It's totally up to the person making the deck. They may have suits, they may not at all. Completely open. Um, do you have um, any unique decks? I don't know. I think they're all unique in their own way. That's a really hard thing to answer. I mean, I have like angel decks and god and goddess decks and fairy decks and animal decks and tree decks and crystal decks and chakra decks and all sorts of different kinds of decks. So I think they're all unique in their own way. So that's like a really hard one to answer. I mean, if you're thinking like, do I have a deck that's independent and like published? No, I don't. They're all mass produced. But, um, you know, I don't know. I don't. Does that make them less unique than any others? Mm, I don't know. Um, what is your current deck crush? Hmm, current crush. Well, I did talk the other day about the Kyle Gray Keepers of the Light deck, and I would say, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I really like this deck. You know, it's, I think, um, I've used it a lot, like I said, for other people, and certainly it's had, like, a very inviting kind of, um, vibe for people and I really love um, the artwork in it so I would say maybe this is my crush right now because I I end up taking it to like fairs and parties and things like that for people so there we go pretty awesome deck and also anything gold leaf I'm like I love it so that's my current oracle crush I would say at the moment though I'm sure later I'll be like no no I'm crushing on this deck and this deck and this deck so 
There's lots. Um, what if you could only use a one Oracle deck, which one would you pick? I don't know. I don't know. There's so many good decks. And like I said, I use different decks for different things. Like I have a chakra deck that I use for chakra readings and I use my God and Goddess decks differently than I would use, let's say my fairy decks or uh, my daily draw decks. But if I only had one deck, if you said, well, Lou, you have to pick a daily draw deck, what would you pick? I probably would pick Wisdom of the Oracle um, just because it is a really good daily draw kind of deck and it has lots of cards in it. It's pretty meaty, but um, I wouldn't have to just pick one deck because then I'd be like, oh, I need this deck too and this one. So, you know, it's, it's hard to answer that question. Uh, if you want to do this tag, let me know. I would love, love, love to see it. Uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.